The Song of the Morrow by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For further information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Song of the Morrow by Robert Louis Stevenson. The King of Duntreen had a daughter when he was old and she was the fairest king's daughter between two seas. Her hair was like spun gold, and her eyes like pools in a river. And the king gave her a castle upon the sea-beach, with a terrace, and a court of the hewn stone, and four towers at the four corners. Here she dwelt, and grew up, and had no care for the morrow, and no power upon the hour, after the manner of simple men. It befell that she walked one day by the beach of the sea, when it was autumn, and the wind blew from the place of rains, and upon the one hand of her the sea beat, and upon the other the dead leaves ran. This was the loneliest beach between two seas, and strange things have been done there in the ancient ages. Now the king's daughter was aware of a crone that sat upon the beach. The sea foam ran to her feet, and the dead leaves swarmed about her back, and the rags blew about her face in the blowing of the wind. Now, said the king's daughter, and she named a holy name, this is the most unhappy old crone between two seas. Daughter of a king, said the crone. You dwell in a stone house, and your hair is like the gold, but what is your profit? Life is not long, nor life strong, and you live after the way of simple men, and have no thought for the morrow, and no power upon the hour thought for the morrow that I have, said the king's daughter, but power upon the hour that have I not. And she mused with herself. Then the crone smote her lean hands one within the other, and laughed like a seagull. Home! cried she, O oh, daughter of a king, home to your stone house, for the longing is come upon you now, nor can you live any more after the manner of simple men home and toil and suffer till the gift come that will make you bear and till the man come that will bring you care the king's daughter made no more ado but she turned about and went home to her house in silence and when she was come into her chamber she called for her nurse nurse said the king's daughter thought is come upon me for the morrow so that i can live no more out of the manner of simple men Tell me what I must do, that I may have power upon the hour. Then the nurse moaned like a snow wind. Alas, said she, that this thing should be. But the thought is gone into your marrow, nor is there any cure against the thought. Be it so, then, even as you will, though power is less than weakness, power shall you have. And though the thought is colder than winter, yet shall you think it to an end. So the king's daughter sat in her vaulted chamber in the masoned house, and she thought upon the thought. Nine years she sat, and the sea beat upon the terrace, and the gulls cried about the turrets, and wind crooned in the chimneys of the house. Nine years she came not abroad, nor tasted the clean air, neither saw God's sky. Nine years she sat and looked neither to the right, nor to the left, nor heard speech of any one, the thought upon the thought of the morrow. And her nurse fed her in silence, and she took of the food with her left hand, and ate it without grace. Now when the nine years were out, it fell dusk in the autumn, and there came a sound in the wind like a sound of piping. At that the nurse lifted up her finger in the vaulted house, I hear a sound in the wind, said she, that is like the sound of piping. It is but a little sound, said the king's daughter, but yet it is sound enough for me. So they went down in the dusk to the doors of the house and along the beach of the sea, and the waves beat upon the one hand, and upon the other the dead leaves ran, and the clouds raced in the sky, and the gulls flew widdershams, and when they came to that part of the beach where strange things had been done in the ancient ages, lo, there was the crone, and she was dancing widdershams. "'What makes you dance widdershams, old crone?' said the king's daughter. "'Here, upon the bleak beach, between the waves and the dead leaves.' 
I hear a sound in the wind that is like a sound of piping, quoth she, and it is for that that I dance a widdershins, for the gift comes that will make you bear, and the man comes that must bring you care, but for me the morrow is come that I have thought upon, and the hour of my power. How comes it, crone, said the king's daughter, that you waver like a rag and pale like a dead leaf before my eyes? because the morrow has come that i have thought upon and the hour of my power said the crone and she fell on the beach and lo she was but stalks of the sea tangle and dust of the sea sand and the sand lies hopped upon the place of her this is the strangest thing that befell between two seas said the king's daughter of duntreen but the nurse broke out and moaned like an autumn gale i am weary of the wind quoth she and she bewailed her day the king's daughter was aware of a man upon the beach he went hooded so that none might perceive his face and a pipe was underneath his arm the sound of his pipe was like singing wasps and like the wind that sings in windlestraw and it took hold upon men's ears like the crying of gulls are you the comer quoth the king's daughter of Duntreen. I am the comer, said he, and these are the pipes that a man may hear, and I have power upon the hour, and this is the song of the morrow. And he piped the song of the morrow, and it was as long as years, and the nurse wept out aloud at the hearing of it this is true said the king's daughter that you pipe the song of the morrow but that ye have power upon the hour how may i know that show me a marvel here upon the beach between the waves and the dead leaves and the man said upon whom here is my nurse quoth the king's daughter she is weary of the wind show me a good marvel upon her and lo the nurse fell upon the beach as it were two handfuls of dead leaves and the wind whirled them widdershins and the sand lies hopped between it is true said the king's daughter of duntreen you are the comer and you have power upon the hour come with me to my stone house so they went by the sea margin and the man piped the song of the morrow and the leaves followed behind them as they went then they sat down together and the sea beat on the terrace and the gulls cried about the towers and the wind crooned in the chimneys of the house nine years they sat and every year when it fell autumn the man said this is the hour and i have power in it and the daughter of the king said nay but pipe me the song of the morrow and he piped it and it was long like years now when the nine years were gone the king's daughter of duntreen got her to her feet like one that remembers and she looked about her in the masoned house and all her servants were gone only the man that piped sat upon the terrace with the hand upon his face and as he piped the leaves ran about the terrace and the sea beat along the wall then she cried to him with a great voice this is the hour and let me see the power in it and with that the wind blew off the hood from the man's face and lo there was no man there only the clothes and the hood and the pipes tumbled one upon another in a corner of the terrace and the dead leaves ran over them and the king's daughter of duntreen got her to that part of the beach where strange things have been done in the ancient ages and there she sat her down the sea foam ran to her feet and the dead leaves swarmed about her back and the veil blew about her face and the blowing of the wind and when she lifted up her eyes there was the daughter of a king come walking on the beach her hair was like the spun gold and her eyes like pools in a river and she had no thought for the morrow and no power upon the hour after the manner of simple men the end of the song of the morrow by Robert Louis Stevenson